Welcome to another special edition of Why Blank Lost, as we discuss episode four of Survivor San Juan del Sur, the epic self-destruction of Drew Christie. Very I'm epic. Dave, yes. I'm David Bloomberg, and basically, I'm a badass. With oh, me, of come course, on! Really? <laughs> what? Oh, that was what I was going to say. That I'm a badass? Sorry, I, I took that <laughs> away from you. <laughs> I was with so me, excited. With, <laughs> with me, of course, uh, is my fellow badass, uh, Jessica Lewis. Is that is That's that good? Right. Okay. Yes. Basically, I'm a badass. Basically, too. we're both badasses. But you need to get the little uh, laugh in there after you say it. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. Yeah, that has to follow the basically I'm a badass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking of, you know, a laugh like that, at the end of last week's episode, I gave a sort of preview of this episode as a hint when I went, duh. Mm -hmm. uh, now, as I watched these four episodes, I was reminded that doing that whole duh thing didn't exactly narrow it down much. Mm -hmm. uh, on the know-it-alls for this episode, back when it aired, Rob and Steven ripped into not only Drew, but almost the entire cast because of how dumb everybody was being. Yeah, Rob even went after Jeremy, while Steven, in a premonition of things to come, defended him. Uh, Rob's criticism of Jeremy was talking about, uh, because he talked about alliances and sub-alliances openly in tribal council, and, you know, he was he was acting up from an emotional place of being upset. So, you know, that's not the duh situation that I was talking about, but so many other players fit that description. Though, of course, we don't want to start talking about Drew just yet. Right. No, I think that it was a very interesting season to revisit and watch how just disjointed people were. And that, I mean, the vote in particular, this episode just showed how they were all over the place. Everybody had their own thoughts and their ideas and what they desired, and they weren't really coming together with a cohesive plan. And I thought it was interesting because Natalie ended up saying something about sometimes it just takes a few straggling votes or something along those lines, which I thought was a really great point because that's really what ended up happening. I think like mm -hmm. four different people got voted for. Yeah. Something like that. It was crazy. So yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we'll talk more about that in a minute, but I know you enjoy, uh, even if, you know, who, listeners, who cares? But, you know, I know, Jessica, you enjoy uh, when I talk about my own history as we discuss these episodes. I do. Um, yes. Hopefully the listeners do, too. Uh, so even though I had been on hiatus, uh, or as they say on Big Brother, hiatus, uh, from covering Survivor for a, a couple of years when, when this aired, I do have a personal and podcast story for this season, if not this specific episode. Um, in November 2014, so I think that was about a month after this episode aired, I posted on my Facebook wall about the debate on whether John Mish was a brilliant strategist who came off stupid on TV or truly was stupid and getting lucky. Hmm. I personally thought it was the latter, which kind of goes along with, well, what we just talked about. Um, I, I also talked about surprising myself by rooting for Natalie because she was the brightest of the bunch at that point, even though I hadn't been a big fan of hers on The Amazing Race. I ended by saying it seemed like the prior season we had too many good strategists, so this season we had to go the other direction to balance it out. All of this resulted in Rob, who was a Facebook friend of mine, commenting on my post to say, this is a good start. Now, let next time, let's do this as a podcast. <gasps> Amazing. Yes. So following that, I talked to Rob about it. And even though I didn't get on for anything in San Juan del Sur by that point, it did lead to me my, to my first appearance on RHAP on February 20th, 2015, shortly before the next season began, to talk about my rules and what Worlds Apart Survivor definitely should have learned. That's incredible. Um, then later in the season, I did a voicemail episode, which was mostly memorable. Uh, I mean, other than because I was on, of course, uh, but because of <laughs> so all the humble. clips, yes, all the clips of Dan sounding like he was getting a little too hot and heavy. It was a, a, a very strange, strange episode. Um, 
after that, you know, I talked to Rob again. I proposed turning Why Blank Lost into a weekly podcast, became part of the regular rotation with him for uh, Survivor Cambodia the following season. And so basically, me posting on Facebook about John being stupid led to you and I talking right here, right now. Look at that. That's so, fascinating. I like so, that history. Yes. So That's where it all started Mish. from. Yes. Thank you, John Mish, for being stupid. Uh, <laughs> You brought us David Bloomberg. That's right. Well, and I must say, I was unaware of David Bloomberg, unfortunately, until I actually was on Survivor. And then I became very aware of you, and you became my favorite person to kind of rip apart everybody's game and talk about us all on the podcast because you were really were right about like everything. And I don't just say that because I'm sitting here today. Like that was my response to listening to you. So I appreciate the fact that you welcomed me aboard. And yes. now here I am with you and I emulate you, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, were you going to wear the David, your right sweatshirt today? It oh, perfect. you know what? Oh, I forgot. It's okay. <laughs> It's too hot anyway. It's like a million you're, degrees I mean, outside. Yeah, but you're inside, hopefully. I am inside, but I'm in Otherwise, my Otherwise, those are some weird walls and couch and stuff. It is strange, outside. right? Yeah. No, but it's like, I don't have air conditioning down here, so it's a little warm. Oh, okay. But I promise you, I will rock the David You're Right sweatshirt at some point. I promise. Okay. okay. Now, uh, you know, the question came to me, what if this is the first time you've ever tuned into this podcast now that I just told that story? Well, first, I'm not sure why Drew Christie would have drawn you in, but if, if this is your first time, welcome aboard. Right. Uh, each, each week during the off season, we were doing pretty much what we do during a normal season. We watch the show, take in all the available information. Uh, since we're at a much later season than we were for the first three weeks of this journey, we do have interviews and other podcasts and articles. But like I said, I was on uh, a Yadis and I am without my own old articles this week. Uh, but whatever we have, we take all the information, compare it to the rules I originally wrote back after season one and have been modifying ever since. Uh, and you can check out the most recent version of those rules at robhaswebsite.com slash blog slash survivor rules. Um, or you can you know go back in time and, and back in history and listen to the podcast, What Worlds Apart Survivors Definitely Should Have Learned, uh, where I go through each of the rules, uh, although I do believe they've changed since then. Mm -hmm. um, or you can get the shorter and much more colorful version of the rules in poster form That's right. uh, at tinyurl.com slash David Rules Poster 2. Yes. And if you are outside of the United States and would like to order, just DM me through Twitter and I can make arrangements to get it shipped to you wherever you are around the globe. So you sure you certainly should do this. They're only twenty dollars. They look great in a frame, eleven by seventeen size. Not this size, right. Not that size. You kind. have that's right. You have the original this one of a original. kind version. Yes. <laughs> So, and in addition to the poster, we also, of course, have another way to get the rules. So you can always have them with you. And that is t-shirt form. Uh, just go to robhasawebsite.com or robhasapodcast.com and click the merch link near the top. Uh, sort the store so new items are first and the shirts will be right there. We have both men's and women's t-shirts available. Excellent. They should definitely order that too. Yes. Uh, now, usually... We have a few things to talk about before we get to the rules. But in this case, I think pretty much everything I want to say will be discussed in one rule or another. So unless you have anything you want to discuss, uh, we can move on. No, I think we can move on. Okay. <laughs> so, so let's be honest here. The reasons that Drew got voted out don't seem like a huge mystery. I doubt we'll have a big debate here like we had last week. Mm-hmm. People haven't been scratching their heads over this one for years, but there are still some important lessons to be learned and plenty of fun to be had, mostly at Drew's expense. Unfortunately. And, Sorry, Drew. Well, yeah, I'm sure he's listening. Um, <laughs> and, and since I think we'll find out that Drew broke so many rules, mm -hmm. we need to figure out which caused the most problems. With that in mind, let's take a look at why Drew lost. The first and most important rule is to scheme and plot. Drew was not exactly a student of the game, by which I mean, I'm not sure he had even seen a single episode. Uh, but even he knew that he had to scheme and plot and said, 
I'm out here trying to strategize and manipulate minds. <laughs> now, alas, trying was the key word in that sentence because he was bad at it. Like, really bad. Super bad. Yeah. I mean, where do we even begin? And that's that's not a rhetorical question. Seriously, where do we even begin? I, I, my suggestion is we start at throwing the challenge. Oh, we're going to start there? Okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, like I said, where do we even be? There's so many different points. I it know. It's, it's really... It's really quite fascinating, but sure, we'll start with throwing the challenge because that okay. was a hell of an idea. Yeah. Um, so Drew told Rob in an interview at the time that if if he had seen the show prior to being on, he would have known not to throw a challenge. <sighs> he, he, quote, I wish I had done my homework a little more. Well, how about a little bit? Not even a little more. Um, well, and, and yeah, that's a start. I, I will note that Drew also said he wasn't alone in throwing it, but that Jeremy, John, and Natalie all knew about it, which is, you know, why Jeremy and Natalie sat out. But he did it without all of them being on the same page. Hmm. Of course, he didn't need anybody on the same page as him since he only had one page and it had Kelly written in big letters on it. <laughs> and he was posting it on every tree. Yeah. <laughs> at camp. Writing yeah, her like name. A of this size, <laughs> yes. you know, it said Kelly on it. <laughs> it was writing in the sand. It was everywhere. Kelly yeah. was everywhere. At least he recognized the strategic threat that Kelly was. Well, yes, which nobody else did at the time. Nobody you know. did. And that was the one impressive moment I did see where he recognized yeah. that Kelly was a threat and she was gonna run, you know, the game if they didn't vote her out. And I thought, oh, well, at least he's got that right. So yeah. Got to give him props for recognizing Kelly's greatness. Yes. Yes. And, you know, even, you know, Josh and Rob have been talking about that for a long time. Now, you know, I guess uh, even a blind squirrel occasionally finds an acorn, <laughs> um, you know, and then, you know, uh, I, I given the information at the time. That was nothing anybody else saw, because to him it was, hey. She's watched every episode of the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has. You know, <laughs> yeah. watching the show is a good idea before coming on. Yeah. And, and I do think that that's something that everybody should do. Obviously, if you're going to get yourself yes. involved in this type of game, you need to understand how it works. And he had that idea that somehow if he would throw the challenge, then obviously he could vote out whoever he wanted, thinking that this grand plan would come together. But there were so many problems with it, in addition to throwing the challenge. But it was it was how he did it right? as he was throwing the challenge. It was so obvious that even Jeff was calling him out on it about how he did terrible in the challenge. And, I mean, Jeff was really giving it to him, which I thought was interesting, that Jeff was almost like shining more of a light on it. Like, hey, if you guys didn't notice, yeah, uh, he did really, really bad in the challenge. And it seemed strange because... He used to do so well in the challenges. And then, yeah, I it was fascinating to me to see Jeff really pummeling him in regards to how badly he performed. Yeah, it's also interesting. You know, we, we watched, like I said, the first three episodes that we've done the, the past three weeks were before Jeff started talking at all in challenges. Yes. They just had titles come up like this tribe behind this tribe ahead. You know? uh, and so it's quite a switch to, mm -hmm. you know, get to Jeff now pounding uh, you know, into everybody how how bad Drew is doing. Yes, and then pointing it out later. So just right. in case you missed it during the challenge, let me remind you that Drew was doing terrible. And yeah. he really, it was so it was so blatantly obvious what was happening. Well, I mean, everything about him was blatantly obvious. So true, true. You, you know, um, now there's one scene that Rob and Steven said on Know It Alls uh, perfectly encapsulated Drew's problem as a player. And that was when John came up to Drew and tried to give him reasons for voting out Julie. Drew refused to even listen to him and said they had to vote out Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, in, in other words, he didn't scheme and plot. He just wanted to dictate. And sometimes when he tried to dictate, the people from the opposing alliance were right there. Yeah. Uh, he, he said it in front of Natalie, although he you know, later said in the interview he believed Natalie was with the guys alliance although if you're talking about a girls alliance and a guys alliance hey uh she's not a guy um 
And, and he also said it loudly enough so that the other women could hear. And so even that part about Natalie isn't much of an excuse. He told Rob that um, because people didn't know the full story, viewers didn't know the full story, quote, I kind of come off like an overconfident douchebag out there. Yeah, that was definitely the reason that he came off that way. Well, it was incredible to watch him standing in the middle of camp talking loudly to whoever was next to him, very obviously who he was talking about, what he wanted to happen, and just brushing everything else aside, even if someone brought up a different idea, because clearly everybody had different ideas going into that vote. Everyone had someone that they wanted to target, and they were mm -hmm. all disagreeing with each other, and he wasn't listening to any of them, and then was blowing up his own game at the same time because Kelly knew that he was gunning for him because she was literally standing right behind yeah. him when he was talking about it. So there's so many problems with everything that he did. It, if you're going to throw the challenge in order to get rid of a particular person, it has to be like the sneakiest thing that you could ever pull off. Nobody needs to know that it's happening. It needs to be completely under wraps. You need to have somebody on the same page as you because, I mean, it, he literally blew his own game up by mm -hmm. thinking he was going to concoct this scheme and this plan, but did it terribly, terribly wrong. I mean, the other thing that helps if you're going to throw the challenge to vote someone out is actually having allies who want to vote that person out with you. Right, right. That, that helps, helps a little bit. Just a little, little bit, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, even though Drew, like, like we, we just mentioned, claimed that it wasn't as bad as it looked out there, he admitted in the interview uh, that he was overconfident in his gameplay. But as pointed out by Dan Heaton in his Survivor Strategic Game blog on RHAP at the time, Drew's interviews, even before the game began, quote, revealed an arrogant guy who expected to run the game. Mm. And Dan said, quote, few players in Survivor's entire history have been more proud of themselves than Drew. He was so, very proud. Yeah, it wasn't just that, you know, like, like Drew was claiming, we just didn't get to see and understand that whole situation. No, that's not it. Because you were acting this way before you even got on the show. Yeah. Well, and also, I think we can take a lot from how he was speaking about his own brother to people in his tribe. And he was telling people on his own tribe that his brother was a ladies man and could always get the ladies when they would go out and well, all that was Alec like, talking about drew that was Alec talking about drew <gasps> yeah i thought it was the other drew. way around no drew was the ladies man oh. in addition to being a badass <laughs> that's fascinating that's even yeah. better then <laughs> yes <laughs> i just remember hearing this going my gosh like it was there was just so many layers of complete unaware like completely oh, yeah. unaware of how anyone was going to interpret what he was saying how he was saying it how he was coming across and he really did act as if he was better than everyone and the dismissiveness that he was showing towards people not listening to what they were saying all of that really rubs people the wrong way generally but then when you get into a situation like survivor and that's what you're doing and then you think that you're going to be able to pull off this this scheme. And I don't know how he thought he was going to have the numbers for this vote at all, because it didn't sound like anybody was on the same page. No. And I, I mean, yeah, and he just he had no clue. You know, uh, uh, talk, talking about, what you know, the Dan Heaton uh, blog, he also said that Drew's day after interview on CBS uh, does little to change the idea that Drew understood very little of why his tribe mates didn't trust him. Now, I tried to get to the link, but CBS.com apparently moved or deleted the interview. Um, but I have no reason to doubt Dan's summary of it. And, and you know, Stephen said on Know It Alls, I don't think we can rely that Drew has a real accurate understanding of reality. Mm -hmm. And then he and Rob came to the conclusion that the correct word to describe him was delusional. <laughs> Well, and it, it might be one of those situations, again, like we talked about, I think, um, was it last week, where sometimes people's perception of themselves, when they go into this game, they think that that's somehow going to benefit how they play this game. is, And he mm -hmm. perceived himself as, as this 
good looking guy that all the ladies loved, apparently <laughs> not his brother, but Drew. And, and he really thought so highly of himself that I think he set himself up coming into this game that he was unfamiliar with. He, he'd never watched it before. So he didn't know how people needed to interact with each other. So he came into this game feeling like he could be the same way he was in real life and that everybody would love him and that it would work and he would get everything he wanted because that's the way his life has always been. Mm -hmm. And I really do feel like when you come into Survivor, there are certain things, as we've discussed, that you kind of have to check at the door. And you can't do those things because you are playing a game. And since he had never actually watched any episode, he had no idea that, oh, I can't just be Drew. I can't just be that guy that I always am at home because it works for me there. It's not going to work for you in a game like Survivor. Well, and it makes you question, does it really work for him at home? Well, I, but that's what I'm curious about. I, I would love to know, does, does it really work for Drew? Because he clearly thinks highly of himself. So maybe he is delusional in real life too. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we can move on to the second rule, which says not to scheme and plot too much. Now, with as bad a job as Drew did in terms of strategy, this was also a part of the problem. First, we already talked about he threw a challenge so he could go to tribal council and get some snakes out. And let's be honest, by snakes, he meant women, uh, starting with Kelly. Uh, so, you know, like we talked about, why Kelly? Well, because she was observant and low key and hadn't missed a single episode of Survivor. Terrible. Well, <laughs> yeah. How could she? How you could know? she? <laughs> Now, as it turned out in this particular group of players that actually, you know, other than a few others who were up there with her, that does put her above and beyond. Mm -hmm. you know, this was, well, I already said what I thought of this group of survivors. So, <laughs> you know, it was, it was not the toughest competition. Let's just say mm -hmm. that. Um, but, you know, at, at the time there was no reason to put his whole game on the line to say, I have to get rid of Kelly. No, especially when they were, ahead in the numbers like way ahead they so it it, it wouldn't have mattered they could have kept winning and mm -hmm. yes the the other team would have been decimated i'm sure and then eventually a, a merge would have happened and you've got the majority and then you can do whatever you need from there but yeah. he got so caught up in kelly 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 that it was there was no there was no game other than voting out kelly even though it was completely right. unnecessary at that time yeah. I mean, he seemed to believe that there was a women's alliance that was going to take over. Now, let's do some quick math. There were nine players on the tribe and only four women. So, you know, strategy wasn't his strong suit. Math wasn't either. And uh, Jeff Probst pointed that out, too, at Tribal yes, Council, I know. which I thought was amazing. Yeah. I'm like, he just keeps telling everybody, like, do, do you see what yeah. can, can you count? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. You need, you need to get out the blackboard. Right. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, by by pushing so hard, the Women's Alliance became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. Um, you know, a, as we talked about a few minutes ago, Drew talked about how the women were going to band together against the men. He did it in front of Natalie. He talked about voting Kelly out right near her. So she overheard. And then it happened again. And he said he didn't care. He mm -hmm. flat out told Muffin that he didn't even trust her and the other women to vote right. He he right. said out loud, "Let's get Kelly out tonight, and then all these bitches don't know what to ex what to do except come to us." I mean, yeah. really, really? Yeah. If he had purposely been looking for ways to cause the women to band together against him, he could not have done a better job. Oh, I know. He really did set it all up perfectly for that exact thing to happen. Is what happened to him, and it made the most sense. It really did because if anyone was creating chaos and problems and issues and just an uncomfortable atmosphere, it was Drew. So mm -hmm. it it makes sense that that the women came together and said, "This is what he's saying," and it's not like. You have to take my word for it. He's saying it in front of all of us, saying it to everyone. So everyone knew exactly what his game was. So it's not like he was secretive about anything. So there was no question as to how Drew wanted to see that his game progress and who he didn't want to be part of that game. And that was all of the women. And the way that he spoke about them was completely insulting. And so good for them for realizing right. that this is what's happening and for taking a stand and taking care of the issue. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, kind of to round out this rule, we know that being the first person to name a name can be dangerous. We've talked about that many times, mm -hmm. but continuing to name a name over and over and over again, when it's been made clear that even your allies aren't interested, yeah. that, I mean, that's not just dangerous. That's stupid. Yeah. And really, there was no true justification for him targeting her. I know we've already kind of touched upon this, right. but you had someone like Jeremy coming to him and explaining exactly why he wanted to vote out um, Keith. And that was because Keith had kind of blown up his own game, said mm -hmm. he had an idol and was really kind of throwing him under the bus. And Jeremy was trying to get Drew to understand that we're supposed to be working together. And Keith is is affecting me negatively around here. And you're supposed to be like working with me. And he didn't care. He was completely right. just dismissive of that and really had no real good justification to get out Kelly versus what Jeremy was dealing with, with Keith. Yeah. And I mean, that's a good segue into the third rule, which talks about being flexible and, you know, let's face it. The word flexible does not describe Drew. Mm -hmm. uh, he he knew what he wanted and that was that. And, and the, the, the Jeremy situation was a perfect example of that. You know, he, how can you be someone's ally, but refuse to even consider their point of view? Right. Uh, you know, Jeremy even said, that tells me you don't have my back. Um, and, and Drew was just like, oh, you're being too emotional. Uh, so, and that obviously wasn't the only time because we, you know, we already talked about, I think when John came to him with a plan, he refused to even hear him out. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't listen to anyone. Right. Unless the person's plan was Kelly, he was not having well, it. He was right. not listening. Which nobody else's was. Right, exactly. And so it's it's incredible to watch someone self-destruct. I mean, and that's really what he did. I mean, he created his own existence and just set fire to it and just completely caused his own demise by not listening to anyone but himself and it, and everything that he was doing was nonsensical and the the ideas he was coming up with just no one else was going along with at some point drew probably should have realized hey we all have to vote here so i need people to agree with me because again i don't understand how he thought there was going to be enough votes on kelly when he didn't have anybody agreeing with his plan yeah and you know, the thing is I'm not even saying Drew was wrong in not, not about Kelly, although we, we know, you know, she did. End we up know being, now, <laughs> yeah, but, but in not wanting to vote out Julie, which was where, you know, John was pushing in a couple others. He, he was right that she wasn't a threat to them and it would have been kind of a waste, but that's not the point. It mm -hmm. didn't matter if he was right or, or they were wrong. He needed to at least, and we've talked about this before, we talked about it uh, just this past season. You need to at least pretend to listen. Right. Um, but he was so blunt about it that he just threw John completely for a loop. And they would have never even been having those discussions as to who would be voted out if he hadn't thrown the challenge to begin right. with. Right, <laughs> exactly. So it would have been a whole different scenario. Yeah. Now, earlier you talked about by the end of it, he was the only one, you know, voting Kelly. Nobody else was. Everybody is voting their own way. I think one thing that encapsulates Drew in this rule is that he told Rob he voted for Kelly out of pride more than anything by the time of tribal council. So it wasn't that, strategy. That <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It wasn't being part of an alliance. It was pride because he refused to be flexible. Right. And it's really unfortunate because someone like Drew, even though he's clearly got some issues coming into this game, he at least had people who wanted to play the game with him, which that can be a struggle for people when they come right. into Survivor. Sometimes you really can't get your, you know, your your heels in and you really can't find a group of people that want to work with you. And, and it can be a very big struggle. And he actually had that. And he also they had the numbers, they were winning, like everything was working very well mm -hmm. in Drew's world as it existed in Survivor. And then he just decides this, I just, I want to get some snakes out and this is what I want to do. Right. But it was everything you would want as far as Survivor is concerned, because things were lining up and things were working well. And then he just threw it all to the wayside and decided yeah. this is what he was going to do. Yeah. So the fourth rule tells players not to let their emotions control him. Uh, you know, so did he do all those things you said because of emotions? I, I don't 
think so, unless arrogance is an emotion. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> I agree with that sentiment right there. Yeah. So, yeah, so we don't really need to talk about that rule much more. Um, the fifth rule, however, talks about the social game and reminds players that they need to pretend to be nice. Mm. From what we've discussed already, it's pretty clear that he failed miserably here as well. Um, even without mentioning any of the things we talked about. So all the, take all those things that we talked about, just put them aside. He still had quite the resume of bad behavior. In the first episode, Drew took charge of the shelter building on his tribe and made sure everybody around knew that that's what he was doing. But that was apparently the last time he did any actual work because our favorite topic of frond weaving came back again in the third episode while everybody was doing it to make sure the shelter roof was solid for some expected storms. Well, everybody but Drew, because he tried for a minute and then gave up and went to sleep. Uh, and this seemed to be a habit because in this episode, Kelly said Drew comes up with these ideas and then sleeps. Uh, Natalie said Drew is just a waste of space. The, the thing is, this didn't seem to be anything different from normal life because you talked about some things that Alec talked about and Drew in his normal life. Alec was talking to Baylor and said when they were kids, their dad didn't even bother to wake Drew up to do certain things like to, to do work because he knew Drew wouldn't be any help. Mm, yeah, this is what I'm saying. Real life is sneaking into the game of Survivor yeah. and it's not the way you play Survivor. And Drew learned the hard way. <laughs> I don't know that he learned, but he, yeah. he might not have learned, but he yeah. saw the consequences of that. Right. You know, right. I mean, if you hate doing manual labor, as far as your real life is concerned, fine. When you play Survivor, you better get up, weave mm -hmm. the palm fronds, clean up camp, do whatever you got to do to help out because people are going to notice. And if you are sleeping, in addition to not helping, they're definitely going to notice. Yeah. And, you know, I, we've talked before about how I used to have a rule that said, uh, you know, don't be lazy. Um, and that rule's gone, but there's lazy and then there's obnoxiously in your face lazy. And that's yes. why it falls into this, you know, pretend to be nice. Yes. I mean, you talked about manual labor. Uh, weaving a, a, a palm frond is not exactly the hardest manual labor and anyone that is has true. ever done. That is true. But there are things that are very difficult while you're out there that you need to take care of. Well, I, you need to be willing yeah. to. And if you're not even willing to weave a palm frond, right. then I think people can assume that you're not going to do much of anything. Right. And I do think that this is one of those situations where it's not even just about being lazy. And I think that's why it matters. It's it's a combination of all of the bad things that Drew was bringing right. to the tribe. It mm -hmm. would be one thing for him to be lazy if he was strategizing well and if he was playing the game with them and if he was respectful of the people mm -hmm. he was playing the game with, then they might look past that and say, you know what? Well, he built the shelter, so it's not so bad. And they might not really make a big deal about it, but it's a combination of things. And so it's like one more thing on top of this huge pile that Drew has already created that people are having problems with. And on top of that, and he's lazy too, and he's not helping yeah. us do anything. So it's just this whole like bad, bad bunch of stuff that he really created. And I really do think that he could have, this game could have gone a completely different direction for him, but this was all of his own creation for sure. Yeah. And you know, you were talking about this whole pile of things going up, even as he was being lazy, he talked about how he was dragging everyone else along and without him, they'd be, they would be nothing. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't just lazy, but he was acting like he was the strongest worker, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, on top of all that, just that behavior, the other things he said, you know, he was rude to Muffin about voting and John told him, you're being a jackass. And Drew replied, I don't care. <laughs> uh, so, you know, to quote Natalie, he was self-centered and oblivious to what's going on. Yes, that is spot on. Very oblivious, very oblivious. So, all right. Uh, the sixth rule warns against being too much of a threat. While I suppose Drew was a threat to Kelly in particular uh, and the women in general, if anyone would have listened to him, the only person who actually referred to Drew as a threat was Drew. 
Uh, he, he said in his final words that he was a physical and social threat, which made me laugh out loud. And then it made me just completely lose it even more when he continued and said, in the long run, I definitely would have beat him. The long run, Jessica, he couldn't mm. even get to the short run. I know you got to get this there. The first boat of their tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's it's and this again, that oblivious word I love because yes. this is someone who really has no sense of self and how he is being perceived. No, nothing at all. Like he has no idea. And the fact that he couldn't even survive the first vote, there's no chance that that long run was coming for him. Presenting himself the way that he did, treating people the way that he did. He's not making the merge. I mean, this is this this was the best decision for them to make when they made it. Yeah. Um, so the seventh rule covers idols and advantages, and we're finally back in a season that has idols. Uh, indeed, this episode has a lot of idol argument, uh, but that was between Jeremy and Keith. As for Drew, he did tell Rob in his interview that he looked high and low for the idol, um, but it wasn't where it was supposed to be. Mm. Of course, that's because Keith had it. Uh, but hey, at least he looked for it. This may be his most successful, not maybe, this is his most successful rule right here because he looked for an idol. He did look, but he also didn't listen to Jeremy when Jeremy was concerned about his position now in the right. tribe. People thought he had the idol. And so someone who is working with him, he's not listening and doesn't care that that's ruining Jeremy's potential game because people think he has an idol. So he might have been looking for them, but he's also not understanding the effect that it has on the perception that someone else might have on another person playing the game. Yeah. All right. Uh, just before I went into the uh, seventh rule, you mentioned that the, the group definitely did the right thing by voting him out. And that's the question uh, that we have here in Appendix A, because it's about the rest of the tribe, uh, you know, uh, keeping their goals in mind and voting out the weak, then the strong, then the weak, then the strong. Uh, so, you know, this was the tribe's first vote. They should have been voting out the weak. And they were now not weak in challenges per se, although. I mean, if you didn't know he was throwing it, let's face it, that wasn't a, it, exactly an Olympic performance, but, but weak in terms of the way he was causing so many problems at camp and, you know, just weakening the overall morale of everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that can have such a huge effect on a group. And this particular group was doing very well. They were winning all of the challenges. They were winning the, you know, rewards. They were doing very, very well. So they were clearly working together. But if you start to eat away at that in the manner that he was doing, it really does affect how people want to play the game. And knowing that he's willing to throw a challenge for his own gain and nobody else's that shows that he does not have a tribe mentality. He's not looking out for the people he's playing the game with. He's only looking out for drew now throwing a challenge. If other people agree with you and that's what the group think is, that's one thing, but it was just his idea. So I think all of that just showed how selfish he was in playing this game and that it wasn't something that he was willing to play with others just himself he really just wanted to be making the decisions and doing everything his way no one else's way and the fact that he's willing to do that and put a tribe at risk like that that's just i mean that's just scary down the road to think that he might do this to us again yeah and it goes back to what you said earlier about how you know you're in this tribe the tribe is continually winning just keep winning and when you get to the merge you can knock people off the mm -hmm. problem is with someone like him there that tribe isn't going to feel like a cohesive unit. Right. If Kelly knows that he's calling her a snake and saying all these terrible things, if, if Muffin knows that he's doing all of this, they're going to go back and they're not going to stick with the tribe, mm -hmm. you know, and they may have their loved ones on the other tribes still. Right. And I so, do think that that's an added component to this particular season is that you are dealing with loved ones on the other tribe. And so that's toying with people's emotions a little bit as well. And yeah, you know, so I do think that there was all of these factors that were kind of just coming together and that the longer that he would have been around, I do think they would have started losing challenges, not because they were being thrown, but because people just can't work together. And a lot of these challenges require communication and require people to listen to each other. And he would not have been good at any of those things. Right. Right. 
All right. So it's about time to wrap things up. What are your final thoughts? I don't think he's basically a badass. <laughs> I don't what? get, I How don't get that impression. That? I know, right? Crazy. Um, I did think that that was really quite amusing, which is why I cracked up so much at the beginning, because that is a true representation of someone who has no concept of themselves. If you are willing to say, I'm basically a badass, and then act the way that Drew was acting with other people, in front of people, saying horrible things about other people to those people, and not realizing what you were doing to them, that you were demeaning, and that you are negatively affecting others by trying to put yourself on a pedestal, then you are not fit to play survivor. <laughs> and um, because you really have to be able to, I don't know, work with people and form relationships, none of which Drew was able to do, even though he was in a position to do just that. He had people that wanted to work with him. He was physically capable of doing well in the challenges. He had a group that wanted to vote together, but he was unwilling to listen to anything that these people were saying. It was Drew's way or the highway. And unfortunately for Drew, he put himself in a situation that was unnecessary. They didn't need to lose the challenge. He did that himself. He made that decision. And I think it's interesting that the other two people that knew that that was going to happen opted to sit out because they didn't want to be part of that decision, Drew. So that's why they didn't perform in the challenge. So I do think that that just speaks volumes of his willingness to put himself over other people. And there are just so many things that Drew did wrong that I just watched this episode kind of in shock <laughs> the entire time that someone was so willing to do all of these things in one episode and then find himself getting voted out. So it was ironic, really, that one of his quotes was, I'm basically a badass, yeah. because basically, no, <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> I'm not a badass. You are very bad at making decisions and very bad at playing Survivor. I'm sorry, but it, that's just what it boils down to. <laughs> All right. When, when Jeremy was considering whether to get rid of Drew, he said he's digging his own grave. And that's exactly what Drew did. He found a shovel, he dug a hole, he made the hole bigger, he jumped <laughs> in, and then he filled it with dirt on top of himself. Uh, it, Drew was a terrible strategist who thought he was amazing and completely in control. He believed he had a perfect read on the game. In his final words, he said he knew all along the women wanted him out of there. Except they didn't until he made them want to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. He threw the challenge without a solid plan of what they were going to do, except for his own certainty that everyone should fall in line behind him. If I were ever going to do a poster that had an image not for those who did well in each rule, but for those who did terribly, it would be a tough choice to figure out where to put Drew. Uh, he massively violated rules one, two, three, and five. <laughs> Um, any one of those could have been a reason to vote him out, but put together, it was an overwhelming failure, the likes of which we've seldom, if ever seen, mm -hmm. as we've talked about, Drew is famous for saying, basically, I'm a badass. He was sort of right because he was bad and he was an ass. <laughs> um, when he made that statement, That's he continued that he was also a manipulator of the game. Yeah, sure. He manipulated himself right out of the game. Mm -hmm. And that is why Drew lost. That's amazing. <laughs> he's bad and he's an ass. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. That's I thought great. you were going to take that from me. I thought you were going to take that line because you started talking about him being bad. You know? I know, so. but I didn't come up with that creativeness <laughs> that you've got there. So that was good. Oh, my word. No, it, this was fascinating. I must say it was fascinating. And um Somewhat comical, really, oh, watching yeah. this all yeah. all go down because you really, as you said, don't often see something like this happen in Survivor. Right. Right. There are people that destroy themselves, that ruin their own games, that kind of do things that are off the wall and you're not sure what's happening. They dump rice in the fire. You know, a lot of things can happen when you're out there. But this was so many things yeah. that it really was like a comedy of errors that you just didn't believe could actually be happening in survivor and it did yeah, yeah. and here All we right. are still talking yep. about it yeah yeah uh well before we look ahead to the next episode we'll be discussing let me remind everyone that the rules we just discussed are available in 
both poster form. Now, that's the good poster. That's not the Drew Christie special bad poster I was discussing. <laughs> and, of course, in T-shirt form. Yes. Uh, for the shirt, go to robhasawebsite.com or robhasapodcast.com. Click on the merch link and sort to see newer items first. For the poster, go to tinyurl.com slash poster 2 Maybe we should get Eric working on a The Worst break rule breakers uh, no that would be to. terribly sad it would. It would. and mean <laughs> it would you're right but we could just put drew all over it you know oh um, my god no he you know what though this is the problem because of the way that it appears his mind works he would think that that's a great thing because he's being yeah, honored it, because now right. he's in a poster right see it'll backfire yeah. So next episode uh, rob has announced we will be looking at episode five of survivor china now, once again, like usual, I'm not going to spoil the result. In this case, though, it's mostly because I don't remember the result. Mm. Uh, but Rob said on the Wiggle Room that this was a prime example of being swap screwed. Mm. As regular listeners know, I very rarely conclude that someone was just swap screwed or twist screwed or whatever. So it should be an interesting episode to look back on. It will be very interesting. Yeah. All right. So now as we're wrapping up, I want to encourage people to check out the RHAP patron program at robhaswebsite.com slash patron. Once you join, you'll see that Rob does at least nine patron only call in shows a month plus weekly trivia. I, I believe as we're recording this, they're doing a patron mafia game. Nice. Um, and so, um, you know, just all these different things that are going on. Uh, plus there's a weekly show with Nicole. There's the monthly patron cast. I mean, it's just yeah, everything. Um, and there've been several shows that have been live streaming to patrons as well. So, you know, in addition to that, there are the Facebook groups where you can, you know, talk to all these people who have many of the same interests as you survivor, big brother, life in general. And, uh, you know, if we ever get out of the house again, um, then we'll get discounts and first access to tickets to live shows. Yes. And that really is a thing. I can't believe when you go to these live events that basically everyone who's there is a patron because <laughs> yeah. they bought yeah. all the tickets immediately. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, remember, go to Rob has a website dot com slash patron. And once you get to the Facebook groups, say hello. Yes, you should definitely become a patron. It is great not only for you, but it's great for Rob and all of the wonderful things that he does. He really does put so much content out for everyone to listen to on so many things that allows you a great group of people to talk to. If you love the same shows and you love the same, you know, Big Brother, Survivor, whatever your big thing is, this is the group of people that are going to talk to you about it and you're going to have mm -hmm. a great time. So you should definitely, definitely become a patron and get the discounts. That's right. That's right. So where else can people say hello to us? Oh, Lord have mercy. I always forget. So can I can I figure it out? Here we go. There it is. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, nope. Hold on. There it is. Right. Oh, there, there you there. got it. I am at Jessica Lewis 89 and David is at David Bloomberg on Twitter. So you should follow us both. You can get both sides of the conversation. I know it's very hard to do this. Look at that. As everything's backwards. Uh, but you should definitely follow us both. We do live tweet when the actual Survivor show is airing. And hopefully that will happen again soon at some point. I mean, there's um, some good signs. So yeah. there, are, there definitely are. It sounds like they're planning on getting mm -hmm. to Fiji with a two week quarantine in there. So a lot more time that people will be committing to being in the survivor world, but yes. it'll be great for us when it actually happens again. So, so I'm at Jessica Lewis 89 and he is at David Bloomberg. Yes. Yeah, so now we need a hashtag and there are so many possibilities because we could do overconfident douchebag. Oh, that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was a lot. Uh, we could do delusional drew. Mm. Uh, we could do self-centered and uh, oblivious. Basically not a badass. <laughs> Basically, or bad and ass. Um, <laughs> Basically a bad and ass. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you think would be best. I'm okay. Oh, uh, Anybody, do anything, any of those that you want. Anyone, just go ahead and use any of those. Make up your own because there are just so many things to say about Drew. That, yes. You know. And then so. also... 
the hashtag for why blank lost. That's right. Why X lost. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you're subscribed to all the RHAP survivor podcasts. Rob has a podcast.com slash survivor or on your favorite podcatcher. We are also on the reality TV rehab ups feed uh, in both places. You can find all the great content like the know-it-alls, uh, the wiggle room, the B and B now in particular, the wiggle room and the B and B were all three part of this journey through time here. Um, but, you know, the, obviously the know-it-alls and This Week in Survivor and others will come back. Um, and, you know, right now he's got a lot of off-season content as well. He just had a uh, very interesting interview with Jamal and he has more interviews coming up. He just did uh, Talking with T-Bird with Heidi Hamels. I know. Um, and so Heidi, of course, was on Survivor Amazon with rob and now mm -hmm. i posted in the patron group for but for any non-patrons this is the type of content you can get in the patron group i posted a photo of myself with heidi from the survivor amazon finale when i had been writing about the show and let's just say i was not kind to her mm. um because she was not kind to christy and you know the the way she was portrayed was um very bad. And therefore, I may have used some very bad words to describe her. Hmm. And uh, she knew about that because uh, Rob had told his castmates, hey, read about yourselves on Reality News <gasps> Online. Oh, my God. And so she and Jenna both knew about that. And uh, when I when I met Jenna, she was like, you, you, you. Uh, and luckily, Rob was there uh, when he he introduced me to her. But with Heidi, she was taking pictures with people. I came up, I took a picture with her, and then I turned. And the funny thing was, it was pointed out to me, I was wearing my Reality News Online t-shirt, which she mm -hmm. obviously didn't look at, and said, hi, I'm David Bloomberg. Because she was like, ah, ah. Now, it was mock anger, I think, you know, and, mm. and she was a very good sport, and so was Jenna after that. But, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, you know. See, these are the stories people get by waiting till the very end. Don't turn off before. you know. I know. You There's the always end, more but... good David Bloomberg content to That's come. Right. That's right. <laughs> I unfortunately don't have any of those stories because I wasn't mm. involved in any of this underground survivor world until yeah, we quite recently. Ground. We were above ground. I know. I wish I had been, though, because it's really incredible to hear about all of the things you've experienced, but also just what you've learned throughout the years by mm -hmm. delving into this so much. So it is great for anyone who wants to go on Survivor to be involved in these groups and to have these conversations and to read all of the write-ups and, and listen to the podcasts because it really will prepare you so much more than you think. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Jessica, uh, thank you very much for another great week. Yes, and thank you to Scott St. Pierre for doing all of the editing both on the audio and video version of why blank lost and also thank you to will from america who does all of the editing on the audio i'm sorry not the editing he did the song on the audio version i have to keep it all straight in my head there is no song on the video that's really unfortunate but thank you will for creating that song and thank you david for another great episode as well and for allowing me to have this journey with you back in time because That's it's right. so nice to get to hear about all of the things that you did previously and you didn't get to cheat as much this week. So that's it's good. It's not cheating. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah. Now, next week it might be cheating. Cause I don't remember anything. About <laughs> next week, <but> See? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get all your cliff notes out. Be like, oh, hell right, yeah. What did I say? Oh before? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't put in all this work for all these years and get nothing out of it. You got to be able to I reuse know. the work, you know. No, I, I think that's fine. I, I'll yeah. give that to you. So. It's okay. All right. Well, I will see you next week for another blast from the past. Bye. <laughs>